when we look up in front of me, it's about 10 different, 10 different people. And they're not my nurse. They are not the doctor. Mm. But because they're trainees, they can be in the room. And them just they ride up on them morning. <laughs> <laughs> Hello everybody and welcome back to Few Few Cents, the show where we give you an insider look at teenage pregnancy. And here to talk about it with me, or here to give us the insider look, is Tiffany Makala. Tiffany, welcome to Few Few Cents. Thank you for having me. Mm. Yeah, I'm here. AKA Tiff Exclusive. I see. <laughs> <laughs> All right, ladies and gentlemen, before we get into it, you know the deal. We're on YouTube, so we're going to ask you to like the video. Share the video oh, to a friend, if even one person. Comment, just share, share it to one person, I'm good. Yeah. Subscribe. Comment. There we, there we go. <laughs> you know what's up. You know what's up. So yeah. So thank you for viewing. If you're already a viewer, if you're not, just press the subscribe button real quick and, and we'll get right into it. So, I know you see a couple of episodes. Don't look. I know you see a couple of episodes. So you know what will come next, which is your little introduction right. and then some questions. So. A very short, brief introduction of Tiffany. She is a past student of Arden High School. She is a member of the Kiwanis. Kiwanis Club. Kiwanis of... Club. By the way, I have no idea <laughs> what they are. Yes. Everybody will explain. I'm like, what is this? They're like, oh, you know, you, it's something like the Lions Club. I'm like, I don't know what mm -hmm. none of that is. So truthfully, I don't know what any of it is. So you might, might have to give me like a brief tutorial real quick. Sure. She loves traveling and she is the mother of a He's precious. Yeah, <laughs> nice. <laughs> yes, ladies and gentlemen, that's a brief summary of who Tiffany is. So real quick, tell me what is Kiwanis Club. Okay, so the Kiwanis Club, um, the one that I'm a part of is the North Spanish Town. Mm -hmm. And we fall under the Kiwanis International Branding. And the Kiwanis Branding is really um, our main... Our main goal and our main objectives is to serve the children of this world. Mm -hmm. Yes, so we, um, anything that's regarding service, fundraisers, um, projects, uh, book clubs, uh, a lot. Oh, oh, no, I'll just start working about it. I'm not divulging it. I'm going to study it because okay. okay. yeah, we can cut so it out. So you're basically, <laughs> <laughs> basically, you guys basically like help. Yes, the, yes, the we are a service culture. club, yes. Okay. So we do um, projects. So um, in the past administrative year, because we're in a new year now, mm -hmm. we did um, we gave two sticks, canes to blind persons. Mm -hmm. So that was one of our projects. We also assisted a fourteen-year-old um, with a brace, a foot brace. Mm -hmm. So he was born with a deficiency and. He hasn't been able to walk from birth. So that brace will now aid in his ability to walk at some point. All right. Cool, mm -hmm. cool. All right. So so now for those who, like myself, who had no idea what any of that is, Kiwanis Club, Lions Club, Service service Club, all of that, you've, you've now known. Thank You're welcome, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So here we have some this or that. All right. And the first one, nice and simple and smooth. Cats or dogs? Dogs. Very good. <laughs> Everybody's been choosing cats. I don't understand. No, why. cats are tea. If I'm gonna like they, cats, oh <laughs> <laughs> that is the same, same exact reason, along with many others. All right, so again, let me see if we can get two for two: beach or river. Well, this is a sticky one. Um, I'm a lover of water, but it's river. Two for two. I have to go. Yeah. Two for two. It'd have Good. To, river for me river, as well. Yeah. River, I like. For, I just don't like sour. I get two tan at the beach. That's just my only thing. <laughs> <laughs> two tan. I love the beach, but two tan. So. Brown people problems. <laughs> I already dark. It can't get worse. <laughs> 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 All right. So would you rather go ten years into the go back ten years to the past or go forward ten years to the future? Um, it's not to look and it's not to like change something. It's like actually go back, go back or forward. So would you fast forward ten years in your life or would you rewind? 10 so years I wouldn't, in your life? I wouldn't be able to come back to to change. No, no, like, no I, you're going. So just one pick direction one. primarily. Yeah. 
I would have to go forward. Can't go back. Never go back. Never. Mm. Would I probably go back? <laughs> 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 would I, no, probably I don't want to say go back because if I go back, I would make a lot of different changes mm -hmm. and I know one of those, I wouldn't have my daughter. Yeah, I know. I, I thought so, about it and I was like, I, I should definitely have to choose the only because... Yeah, I have to go know, forward. You have something right now where you don't want to change. Yeah. 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 I go if I could have changed, we'd always have changed. If we don't, yeah. 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 Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and then we have one more now. Would you get back together with your ex or go bald? Wish I know my ex then. I mean, let's say your worst one. No. Um... <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. Um... Oh, my cramp. Ow. <laughs> <laughs> no, wait. This one's sticky. Um... Personally? My demon like my ex, I can't go back. I can't go back. I can't go back. So you don't go back? Yeah, I can't go back. I have some decent-ish ex, you know. But where well, I work with the worst one. Mm. The, the, the worst one. Mm -hmm. uh, my ear grow fast. No, no, no. It's not. It's not. It's not grow back here. It's like a shot. So I just walk my step in the neck. Hi, baby. I'm coming back to you. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> but now... <laughs> <laughs> but now... <laughs> But not going bald. I can't do that. I'm sorry. No, we can satisfy the natural hair. Mm. I feel like I'm going to look decent bald. I think I'm going to You're not far from it. Man, okay. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, I just... I don't mean bald spots are coming in. I mean the length of your hair, the height of your hair. I have to get over my hair. This, I cannot, I cannot mind. These comments are not for me. Me not go bald, <laughs> <laughs> All right, ladies and gentlemen, all right, all right, all right, enough of the banter, let's get into it. <clears throat> so, one, in the intro, I mentioned that you have a lovely, you're the mother of a lovely little girl. Yes. In the this or that, you chose to go to the future because you don't want to lose something, and that something is your lovely little girl. So, yes. and the topic is, of course, an insider look at teenage pregnancy. So, um, tell me and the audience your story, like, Crunch it. Just to summarize until, it. Yeah. Okay. Hi guys again. <laughs> so um, as uh, he as Kimani gave the rundown, um, I'm a past student of Arden High, but I did a Cape Unit One at Saint Catherine High School. Mm -hmm. So yes, I did my Unit One there, and while doing um throughout at the school year. You know, from September to June. School I keep, you know, you have a little boyfriend. Yeah, and school I keep. But it happened and it happened in May. When it happened, um, but it kind of know already. Because um, God bless me, it's a very checkable cycle. Mm -hmm. So... I will I didn't know. Um I don't know what it was. If it was at the time, I'm gonna say at the time, because at the time I didn't believe in certain things. And certain things was proposed not by the not by my daughter's father, but by somebody mm -hmm. else. Oh, oh, sorry, but late. Just certain things as in you know. Yeah, okay. yeah, you know, swallow it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and at the moment, I was in, it was a, I was in my church, I was in my church. Yeah, that I sound funny, me in my church, but me get pregnant, right? Mm -hmm. But you know, we live, we, we, we have a, yeah. Yeah, we we'll slip, we we'll slip. Yeah, we we'll slip and slide sometime, but God, God know the art, and that's why I love God, and God love me. Yeah. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, um, um, I believe strongly that that mm -mm, so I decided to carry my child. Never really got so well with uh, my dad, 
I may just put it out there, my dad. And you know, all parents, most parents, they're going to have worse if they had plans so you are, they see potential or see the greatness in you. Mm. So they're going to be really disappointed. So he was really disappointed and everything. It caused a very bad gap in our relationship. We mending it, but yeah. But when I found out I was pregnant, it was pitched to me. Either that or <clears throat> you go your ways, you come out of my house. And, you know, girl being girl, where did I say she don't believe in that? I'm going to stay at my grandmother for the time. And then my mother, she was like, no, I can't. Well, she made me come back home. Mm -hmm. We had a family business at the time. Oh, my kind of rush story. I'm sorry, guys. <laughs> I'm so sorry. So it happened in me. I found out I was pregnant in me. And for those who have done K or the CXC, know that um, May is the beginning of the exams. So I found out I was pregnant in May. Um, so I never did, a, did a go do away with it. So then I proceeded to do my exams. Mm -hmm while well, knowing I was pregnant. Um, but it was the early stage, so I was able to complete my examinations. And after completing it, I got my four subjects. It wasn't the best, but I got them, so I was grateful for that. We went into summer now, and still keeping the baby, still at conflict with my dad. You know, me not get no money other than any little help. And I started working. So I started working in my family business. When I started working in my family business, um, I worked there until probably about six months or so. Because at six months, I was hospitalized. Yeah. And when I was hospitalized, I was hospitalized for three days. Admitted for three days. And for the three day them came on you. I get six injections. Mm -hmm. Why? Also, it was UTI. So, um, UTI, <laughs> UTI is urinary tract infection. Mm -hmm. Yeah, <laughs> for those who don't know, <laughs> it's not a sexually transmitted anything. It's not any of that. It has to do with your urinary tract. Um, for those who hold up the pee or not passing out um, the waste properly, the waste is then in the track, mm -hmm. and then it may cause bacteria, it causes an infection. Mm -hmm. um, the reason I had to be hospitalized is because uh, when, with my case, it was bad, because we usually hold on my pee a lot. Because when I was working, um, the business I was in, I couldn't, it, I just hold up my pee a lot. So it ended up that, uh, it was so bad that it was affecting my kidneys because I was feeling some sh crazy pain and I thought I was in um, early labor. And that's when I was brought to the hospital and they said um, the stage that it's at, it may cause her to, um, to affect her, may affect her. So they said they had to hospitalize. And throughout that process, six injection, throughout the whole day, every day for three days. Yeah, but God was good. And I came out, um, I was good. But I stopped working because at that time, no, um, belly started get bigger. Mm -hmm. um, the pressure was there. So I, the, I wasn't able, I didn't have enough energy. And I wasn't able to carry out the business because it was, the hours are crazy. So yes, it was like that. So, so I stopped working and when I stopped working, um, I was just there. My mom asked me to come back home because, as I said, it was either you yeah, abort the child or, or you yeah. leave. Yes. So, my mom, as my time got closer, my third trimester started to close down and narrow down. Um, my mom asked me to come back home. Mm -hmm. So, when I came back home, <clears throat> um, it was okay. My pregnancy, I can't complain to be honest. I did other than the time I was hospitalized, I didn't have a terrible for the first trimester I had nausea. I couldn't vomit. Just nausea. First trimester is how long? It's three months. Okay. So, so first. first, second, all the time is three months. Yes, yes, yes. So you know the first trimester is when they normally say, um, your the baby's at risk, you don't want to really share the news until you exit 
that trimester mm -hmm. because anything can happen yeah. and you can lose the baby. So that's a difficult, a sensitive part. So at that point, I was having a lot of nausea and I couldn't vomit, but the nausea was terrible. Second trimester was smooth sailing, except for the end, which mm -hmm. was at um, when I was hospitalized. And then my third trimester, but you just feel like a watermelon just in my bed. But you just really like she was getting heavy mm -hmm. and heavy. Yeah, really. And I was hospitalized a second time. Funny enough, it was about a week before I had her. Mm. Yes. So it was at the UTI again. Same cramps. I was having thought I was going to have, I was in labor because it's so close. So close, yeah. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't labor. It was the UTI. And then while they're admitted, I had an asthma attack. Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I had an asthma attack. So I had to be on the oxygen. And I was there. I think it was another three days. They wanted to push it to four days, but you know, they, I was adamant. I had to come out in the evening, so I didn't mm -hmm. need to. Mm -mm. Yeah. So back home, I left the hospital the Monday. The Monday I left the hospital, and the Thursday I started having pain again. But this time the pain, it wasn't similar. It wasn't as similar to the other ones, but there was some, it was a sharp pain, but it different. It's coming from somewhere else. Like, yeah, like a time now, baby, I come. That one was a con contraction? Contractions, yeah. Oh, thank you, Brazy, not to me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, gee, that's my show still, so. But um, that was contractions. Um, having the contractions, I started around two, around two o'clock. It was in the afternoon. Having them terrible. I was just crying. I was like, "No, mommy, this one feels bad." And they brought me down. They examined me, and I was dilating. Mm. I was two centimeters dilating. So, I was in active labor for twenty four hours. 24 hours active labor. Mm -hmm. Yay. <laughs> that yeah. means what the, the the process from like the start to finish is that just like 24 hours. So yeah, it was a full 24 hours. So I I went down to the hospital around after two, as I said, I was two centimeters dilated at that time. Mm -hmm. And I had her on Friday at 2 47 p.m. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it was a full 24 hour um, um, active labor. Um, when I went down and they checked me and they said two centimeters, I was like, okay, yeah, she come in. So they're not going to send me back home. They're going to keep me on ward because I'm a first time mom. Mm -hmm. So they put me on ward upstairs. Done a Spanish stone right there, sir. Anybody in Spanish stone? Make up Spanish stone, baby, there. Spain sound massive. <laughs> 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 yes, I went upstairs unwired. So this was prenatal. So prenatal is when before you have baby and they're observing you, you can I was on prenatal the week before. So mm -hmm. I was at the same place, but I wasn't over on the same section. So when I was upstairs um throughout the day the pain got um a bit it was still bearable. The pain was still bearable, I won't lie. It was still bearable, but it was getting there. It was coming on. Mm -hmm. So while it was coming on, um, so I may breathe. They told me I couldn't eat anything, I believe. Yes, they told me I couldn't eat anything. So I wasn't able to eat anything because they said they're not sure how fast my process is going to be. So they're going to watch me and I mm -hmm. can't eat. So me don't eat anything from after two. Um, my mom came... And my mom came, they brought food for me. And me, I don't eat. Mm -hmm. Me, I don't eat because I never dare stay up there hungry. It's it's really I couldn't do it. I felt, it, and it was the burden that is on your body or the process that you're going through mm -hmm. when you're in labor. is like, yeah, dead, you're thirsty, you're hungry. is is the worst. 
Hey, labor the worst. Mm-hmm. I mean, I said, no, my labor was worse than my delivery. I can say it right now. Oh, okay. Labor was worse than delivery. So, I didn't eat the food and night come, good and everything. Can't sleep because the pain gets start getting sharper. Pain start getting sharper. You know, with the right at the backyard, <laughs> me at ear gunshots. Mm-hmm. I not tell no lie, me at ear gunshot like so I range the next door to me mm-hmm. and gunshot I ring in the hours and night. So I can't sleep. The pain I get worse and I can't sleep. Gunshot I ring. I call my mother. I cry. I say, Mommy, I can't do this. I tell them to take your baby a man in for cut me. I can't do this. I can't do it. It was so unbearable. It was getting like, I must have got a baby soon. Mm-hmm. And then, don't the Spanish nurse and doctors run wide at certain times. So if them not running for a check, like them not run wide for a check here, and you feel like, say, yeah, but you feel like, say, you are dilate more, so you want to go downstairs and it's not time, you have to just sit down and wait until that time for them to come check you mm-hmm. before you can know. So you can just imagine you know, that pain and then you can't get nothing for you, so you just sit in and you wait. Or you can't imagine. No, sorry. Not sure. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you can imagine it, but I don't know if it makes sense yeah, because. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, mm-hmm. um, after my call, my mommy say, You can do it, man. No worry. Um, you got all right. Just breathe and just pray. You got all right. So, all right. Um, I met someone there actually. I met a young lady, a big woman for me still, but young lady. Um, she, she was there, but she was going to get cut. She was scheduled for cut. Mm-hmm. But, um, you know, when you, sh- I keep saying you know. When you're scheduled, when you're scheduled for cut, you mm-hmm. can't go down until they have um blood on file for you. So unless it's an emergency, mm-hmm. They're not gonna put you on the table unless they see that you bring the two um the two donors of blood. Mm-hmm. Some people go around it, some people get around it, but that's the majority of it um once you're scheduled. So she was there and she was waiting um on her child's dad to sent through the whatever. And we got really cool. She was actually um encouraging me because this was her second child. So she was where it speaking to her, she was up with me throughout the night and speaking to her um it kind of mellowed me down a little Mm -hmm. to just breathe and just get through it and bear it so that was my piece of comfort to just keep me throughout the night um i dozed i fell asleep when i woke it was around five after five or so and i informed the nurses that i was feeling some sharp pains Mm -hmm. so they then checked me again and can man guess how much me changed from was a tree. Change from from a two like to from the, two to the, a month. From two to about. I'm not really a gambling man, but I guess <laughs> to like about six, six. Mm-hmm. So, throughout all the pain, I'm gonna calm my mother until I say mega mate then take the baby. <clears throat> In the morning, I was only four centimeter dilated. Up. Four <laughs> centimeters dilated. <laughs> Barely. Which is. Yeah. So how make I manage the rest of the run now? Oh my candidates. <laughs> so I was at four and when you're at four they send you down down to the delivery room. Mm-hmm. To the labor and delivery. Yes, labor and delivery room. So I was down in the labor and delivery room, down in another room like cool like igloo. Cool bad. Yeah, I mean somebody said that already. Cool bad. And then you're there and you're in the night to them. Because mm-hmm. you're in labor, you know, so you have a free, you have to have one loose clothing and you're down there cold. And then the piece of linen with the pan the bed, it not having a little cushion. And in the night, you know, like you're, you're leaning in your yard. Mm-hmm. And the, the, the comforter. <laughs> like a comforter. <laughs> 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 There's no comforter there, mm. and it's cold. And so I went down about, um, so they checked me around six or so, 
and they sent me down around eight, eight, nine, around mm. eight, nine. Just estimating the times, not exactly. When I went down now, temperature lit me and me. I try to keep warm and everything, trying to stay as warm as possible while bearing the pain, while bearing. So now the cramps and the contractions, they start coming closer. Mm -hmm. So they take less time to come, but they're shorter also. So they're not as long. The pain, the timing of the pain or the, what do I call it now? The time lapse of the pain is not as long. I'm just a time lapse. Mm -hmm. Can you have a cut of these? <laughs> I don't know about that. <laughs> <laughs> the time frame of the mm. pain mm -hmm. was shorter. But uh, the frequency in which it's coming mm -hmm. is closer. Mm -hmm. So they're coming more often, but they're shorter. So there now another person, the, the girl, them, the girl, them gone bad. The, the pain is terrible, but ladies, you don't need to behave like that. I'm glad that I come from another lady because if a man have opened my mouth, no, and say honestly, like that, well, they don't need. Well, my pain tolerance is very high. There you go. Yeah. And then one next lady, one probably non-existent. Yes. So she probably stubborn. But when you her, scream and carry and then, on, no, you put the baby at risk. Well, you're that's, putting that's the baby at risk. information to be known. But then because the nurse in my family tell them, Mommy, you can't scream, so they can't get to tell them. So you, you might hurt your baby, you might harm your baby. Mm -hmm. Some there mothers, you go. So young mothers, don't. Screaming might hurt your baby. Just breathe. Inhale, exhale. Mm-hmm. Yes, yeah, so um, I was 19 at the time, mm -hmm. and um, my main aim in labor and delivery was to just uh, get through it uh, um, healthy, get through it um, alive, get through it alive. Mm -hmm. Because at the time, oh my God, how did I forget this? In 2017, in 2016, 2017 was the time of Zika. So Zika was when the mosquito bites would give the mm. baby some deformities or they were born with, with them head big and, you know, them look away. So it was a really scary um, time frame to be pregnant mm -hmm. and to be um, going in labor. So I was also worried about that because the mosquitoes, them, you know, Spanish know them out sometimes. Yeah. So that, but when... As I said, I came out of it. I took my mind out of the experience. And when I come back in, it was when this, the pain, it was like second to second, like seconds. Like it was on the seconds. It was on the seconds. Before it reached the seconds, no. 12 o'clock. 12 o'clock, my nurse checked me again. And I was at 6. 6. Mm -hmm. 12, I was at 6. At 6 o'clock, I was at 4. 12 o'clock, I was at 6. So, my sad panic man said, no, this will take too long. Like, I was really getting into because I couldn't eat. I couldn't drink water. I couldn't get a piece of ice mm -hmm. because they're saying they don't want you to bring it up or just in case you have to be rushed into an emergency cesarean and your stomach needs to be empty. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, I can't bother with all of them something here. I need to hurry up and get over this so I can eat. And so I remember my mom told me when she was in labor with my sister, my last sister, she drank olive oil. And when she drank the bottle of olive oil, the baby come and she catch her baby. To how fast the baby come. Yeah. <laughs> Don't I'm, quote I'm, me. I'm not much of a scientist, but. <laughs> Don't quote Don't me. Don't know how that works. <laughs> Can't figure out how that works. But, mm. Just <laughs> probably she exaggerated it a little bit. Yeah, probably. <laughs> <laughs> probably she exaggerated it a little bit. Mm -hmm. But uh, I remembered and I had a bottle of olive oil and I decided to drink some of it. Uh, and I drank some of it. That was after the nurse examined me after 12. And I drank some of the olive oil and I went back into my take my mind out of this. I need to just try and stay calm, just breathe through the experience. So that was just my focus at the moment. 
Um, I think I dozed. Yeah, I started to get some little seconds. So outside of the pain, I would doze a little. Mm -hmm. And then the pain would bring me up back. And then I would doze a little. So that's how tired I was also. Um, I wanted to pee. Mm. Or I thought I wanted to. No. Yeah, I thought I wanted to pee. So then I told the nurse, I told my nurse that I wanted to pee. She said, you can't go to the, the bathroom because the bathroom was a good distance away. So you can't walk to the bathroom. So she brought a little chimney and um, I stood by the bedside and pee. Them time here, all pride and shame gone, you know, because... All of the dear, I go through the same thing. Mm -hmm. All of we have the same thing. <laughs> All pride gone. So, stoop and pee. But after, after I was finished, a sensation to go to the bathroom came. And it was like a very it, intense, like, my, I forgot, number two. Mm. And... I was like, no, I'm thinking of the baby, I come in, the baby, I come. I'm going to call to my nurse. And I called to the nurse and I said, nurse, I think she'll come now, I think she'll come now. And she was like, no, no, you're not ready, you're not ready. The nurse, my feet, my just people, I feel like I want to. So she checked me. But she was a training nurse because Spanish Town is a training hospital. Mm. So they have the trainees there. She was a trainer. So when she checked me, she was a bit iffy. She was like, I think you're ready, but I'm not sure because you never look like, say. So then they call for a midwife, or mm -hmm. one of the, or the RN. She's with you. And she came and fear, and then be, the trainee and is about my hand size. Mm -hmm. The other nurse hand is about two of my hand. Her hand is like, and then she come and she checked me and it was, it was, it was uncomfortable. It was one of the most uncomfortable check I ever have. And she was like, the lady, ten wheelchair, delivery room. Mm. Pan the table, Marie. <laughs> it's time to go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was time to go. Mm -hmm. And Spanish Town as a train in hospital need to cut it out. The trainers them don't need to be looking up the ladies them. I'm on the bed, and you have to be open because you can't close your legs. Mm -hmm. but the nurse was like, Mother, you have to open your leg. Then you go. So the, I had to open and they open. When you look up in front of me, it's about 10 different, 10 different people. And they're not my nurse. They are not the doctor. Mm. But because they're trainees, they can be in the room. And they just they ride up on the morning. <laughs> Don't laugh. I was, I didn't. I <laughs> held it. Ah, company. <coughs> I didn't have a laugh. Yeah, one of them even said she did in a labor. No, guys. I don't know. I just couldn't manage the screaming. But really, me never did show like to how the others are behaving. Mm -hmm. Probably that's why they never think somebody did ready. Yeah, true. Mm -hmm. And then whereas as a first time mom, um, me never did go on. So the said, no man, she not feeling no pain. She yeah, not ready. Right. She, yeah, good she mom. good. <laughs> she Gucci. No auntie, baby I come. Mm -hmm. So reach on the table and about five minutes of delivery. That's why I said my labor was worse than my delivery because I had about five minutes of delivery. Um, I was uh, made it ready for my baby. So mm -hmm. I did a lot of research. I did a lot of um, menarism. I anticipated her, so I wanted to be ready for her. Mm -hmm. So I did a lot of research, a lot of YouTubing, so I watched a lot of videos. So I knew how to breathe. I, based off the videos and the research, you know, you breathe with your contractions. When you feel the pain, you breathe and you push. Oh, not to breathe, how to push, sorry. I mean, I, I, a lot of people have telephone information. <laughs> I'm sorry, guys. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I mean, to, I learned how to push properly. Mm -hmm. That's what I meant to say. <laughs> there we go. I learned how to push properly. So you push with your contractions. Yes. 
So with that knowledge and with the aid of the nurse that I had, mm -hmm. she basically, she just helped me. She just, and pushing and the baby came. She was big, she was eight pounds. And thank God, that's why I was like, I love me now. I didn't get a tear, not one tear. Anger is still Gucci. Big up yourself. <laughs> Big up yourself. <laughs> yes. Right, so, um, so you go through the whole ordeal, you survive, you come out, still Gucci. Gucci. I think you work for it. And um and yeah, all and all of this was was at nineteen. So like mm. is there what would I want to ask you? It's like, what was... Because, like, this is, like, 19, new baby, can't go back to school, um, distant with your with one of your parents. Mm -hmm. And what was the relationship with, with your oh. daughter's father? Oh. Um, I'm just to try to understand all of what could be an issue around being pregnant at 19. Okay. So, one of the major, major issues of why my dad... Um, Oh, that I, I didn't think I was gonna come. I'm not gonna divulge. No, you know, you know, you know. Just so um, he wasn't. You know, parents let them for pick your partner. Mm -hmm. Some, and they yeah, should, yeah, 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 some, mm -hmm. yeah, some parents. So he, my dad, he has that concept, or not to pick in per se, but he. But for kind of have a say. A say, say yes, or them no one feel them want to certain type so they yeah. they have a certain type that they want for you and in all parents because truth in, and in fact right now if i should be honest when my daughter started dating me i got have an input so. yeah um, i mean most yeah it's so no your parent just get up and say oh yeah, you do, you do. Mm -hmm. i feel like that kind of hard i'm gonna wait after it think about our workout, forget to that level of like easy going. Probably is a friend like, that none of that fear. Yeah. No. Yeah, but then if it just we probably have a problem as depend cause like me know people and then if, if me if you have one dot, you know, for, for example, if me if you have one dot, you know, and then she reach whatever age people date at, no no no, I'm gonna decide it. <laughs> <laughs> Whichever age, and like she it, whether or not she tell me I'm gonna find out, however the situation arises. And if it, if the person have a personality where you're not approved, where me not feel yeah. comfortable with yeah. my offspring being in yes. your company twenty four seven, me not think mega just be like oh yeah my dear thing my business go on your own life yeah. go on anything. No, me feel like mega probably like all right yeah man so that probably yeah it's that that probably not gonna work. So I'm a, so I I'm, I'm kind of understand. Mm -hmm. So that was one of the um that was one of the problems that contributed to again no I'm understanding my dad's decision or my dad's um stance at the moment. Mm -hmm. yeah, so relationship with her dad was okay um Oh cause I thought that was because <laughs> you hit Bob like four times and then you stop and I'm like I still don't get it. <laughs> So like, um, two bull carrying in a one pen, and mm. this was one pen that I just decided with a child coming in the equation, mm. um, may I take myself out with my child because you're not gonna rule and control me to a certain point that it's gonna my child will be seeing it and and thinking this is okay or this is mm. the way. So. so was was he a teenager as well? No, 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 okay. no, 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 no. He um he was an adult. He was a young man, young man, yeah, young twenties, early twenties, mm -hmm. yeah, at the time. Mm -hmm. So um we couldn't. It it wasn't gonna, but he was there. So he played his role before um while I was pregnant. He played his role. He was there. I would say, but. Uh, when I found out I was pregnant and then certain circum certain things was happening and I was like, no, I don't think this is it. Mm -hmm. So that's what really um 
push me to say, all right, look like me if I could just be a single mother because I can't. I will not. I will not um, subject my child to a toxic mm-hmm. environment or relationship. Yeah. Yeah, and I mean, it was really toxic. <clears throat> <laughs> Thank God that you are one of the teenagers that did have AIDS growing for your body. Enough to survive um, and I had great labor and deliver. Yeah, that is that is yes. also a good thing as well. Which is where, unfortunately, most people, most teens who get pregnant fall short. Is mm-hmm. the support the support system is non existent. Yes, yes. So they, they end up falling falling. Falling. Yeah. Falling, yeah. Falling to society, falling to the strip. Pool, yeah, just, just all anything the, to mm-hmm. make ends meet and to provide for the child. Yeah, which is which is something I did want to look at briefly. Which is, um, is is getting pregnant as a teen like a a, a death or a life sentence? I kind of have an answer to that because I have I know people and I have very few by the way. No, I know people and I have family members who did get pregnant as teens and they're extremely successful right now. But then I also know the opposite, which is people who got pregnant in their teens and their life has just been a downhill tumble the entire time. So, I mean, from you know, you seem okay. I'm good. Um, yeah. I am good. I can say, and I have to say, I give it all to God first and foremost, because if it wasn't for God, like, honestly, I don't know. Jesus. <laughs> Jesus, yeah. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Yeah. So, mm-hmm. so it's it's a support system is good. Having I've, a head screwed on. Is support good. system is very important because um, if it wasn't for my mom, mm-hmm. like if it wasn't for my mom and my sisters and my dad, my dad, my dad ensured me can make take care of when I was when she was two months actually. I started working. Yeah, two months. So I just went right into working so I could fend for her because mm-hmm. it was my decision. You yeah. choose baby, take care of baby. Take care of baby, yeah. Yeah. Sure. So um, I appreciated the opportunity to have that uh, that um, job because mm-hmm. a lot, as you said, and it goes back to support. And support is one aspect because many may have the support but still there's other things that cause them to still fall or to still feel mm-hmm. yeah like it no not go work it, or, yeah because yeah, yeah some persons generally don't want their children when they carry them mm. and i'm that's why I, I started off by saying in the beginning i did not believe in it i'm not going to advocate or say anybody should but I'm just saying, as human beings, we need to assess our circumstances mm-hmm. and assess our situations. And even if, or I'm not going to say even if, but when you assess the situations and you assess the circumstances, if the outcome of the decision is not going to benefit you and the child, mm-hmm. don't keep the child. Okay. That's my advice. Yeah. Because it this will no um, or you can keep it and give it up for adoption. It, it's, but if you won't have this up, if you know you're mentally not ready, you're financially not able to. You don't know how or when. You don't have the support system. You don't. If you should get a job, you don't have someone that you can leave that child with. Mm-hmm. The baby daddy is just a sperm donor. Or you want to do it just to keep no. It it will only end up in the child. It has a very bad impact on the child because this is why now we have a lot of kids in depression. And kids having kids because the parents them from the get-go were not sure or they weren't ready. And then they made the decision and them go ahead and them say, Yeah, I'm a breed. I wanna keep the boy pit me or yeah, my mind me or my daddy for me and then bam man gone because mother sure what oh, I don't even remember how it go, but 
Assalamualaikum. No, no, no. 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 No, Mommy a sure thing, but daddy a possibility. In mm. essence, when you birth a child, it's definitely your child, but you're not sure who the father is. Mm. The, the father may be a if or but or mm. him, he, she, dear, he, yeah. old lady. Yes. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Kemani was trying to find a survey on, on our teenage mm -hmm. pregnancy rates locally, yeah. locally, which I think has skyrocketed since COVID. But, um, to the moms in it now, just trust God. If you don't believe in God, trust whomever you believe in. Um, find that support. YouTube has a lot of information. You can YouTube anything you want. If you want to watch the birds so you can know what's going to happen, YouTube it. I did a lot of that. I yeah. saw a lot yeah, of said, yeah, labor. Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. So YouTube, um, get information. Don't be afraid to ask older women, more experienced moms. Moms, um, don't be afraid to take corrections. Don't be afraid to take advice. Because many times we think that we may know it all, but uh, we're still young because we're teenagers, right? Mm. Mm -hmm. And to uh, the moms like myself that um, started out, as a, that are teenage moms, basically. Um, you have your toddler growing or you have your baby growing. You know? Just continue doing the good work. If you're not doing a good work right now, just try and find a balance that you can um, be a good parent to your child because we don't want to be putting our kids into depression and the kids these days are too smart mm -hmm. and they take everything to heart. My daughter, they're too smart. So we have to be gentle with them and we have to be kind and we have to be patient and being a mom has really taught me patience. Um, being a mom has really humbled me. And being a mom has really set my goals in, in focus, has really um, gave me perspective. So you get there. It's not the end of the world. Um, it's not a dead sentence. It's not a dead sentence. But if you're not ready, don't, don't do it just because. Wait until the time is right when you're better able to to fend for and take care of a child mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. okay all right well that's a good point to wrap it up at um again thank you for coming on thank you for sharing your story with my audience letting you know them know what's up and, and all, all the good stuff and all the bad stuff and, and everything thank you for having me guys yep guys i am the one they should be thanking us Oh, yes, I'm guys. I'm saying it. I'm <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for coming out. <laughs> <Yes. laughs> so, yeah, so thank, thank you, you for... ladies and gentlemen, for tuning in. This has been 50 Cents. I've been your host, Kemani Booth. This has been our guest for today, Tiffany McCullough. And her phone is ringing, I think. And this is where we will close off for today. Remember to like, share, and subscribe. Leave a comment. Let us know your thoughts. Share it to a, a teen mom or a friend or somebody yes. who you think this information will help or the story will uplift or educate. Definitely. And I will see you guys next week. Bye. Bye.